I've always liked just the art of cutting hair. I've always liked uh, not only making uh, myself look good, but I found that I had a niche for it. I had, a, I had one of the things that I felt like uh, the talent, the talent and the, uh, the rawness of taking something that looks like nothing and turning it into something was amazing to me. And I'm doing it with a tool that allows me to transform someone's uh, face just by cutting their hair. And I think also with that, it just gives you a level of confidence. You know, you can put on clothes, you can put on um, jewelry, but there's nothing like transforming someone's uh, confidence by giving them a great haircut. And I just think that, you know, barbering allowed me to do that. And, you know, changing someone's life and uh, attitude is, um, is really what I enjoy doing and still love it. Starting at 11, uh, when I really, when it really became serious, I think around 17, 17, 18, uh, it became something that I was doing for myself and uh, my family and some of my friends because uh, we just couldn't afford to go to the shop as often as we wanted to. So um, it was something that I enjoyed doing, but when I really became serious about it as, um, as a lifestyle and taking care of myself and, and, and my family, uh, 17, 18. One of the biggest challenges, wow, you know, it's, it's a lot of them. But I think that the, the stigma that people think that, you know, you're less than uh, because you're in the beauty and barbering industry, I think that, you know, uh, one of the challenges is, is, is making people um, really understand the person. There's a level of, um, how, can I, how can I word this? There's a level of, a professionalism that comes with this industry, but I think that it's like anything else, you know, uh, if you're not doing it on a level that where people can really respect you, um, the challenges can be uh, really uh, surface level. Um, but there's so much more to just being a barber and just being in this profession. It takes care of my family, so, you know, the business aspect of it is, is much more challenging than the art itself. One of the things that I would have done differently is, is my approach. I probably would have learned a few more things that as I grew to um, have a liking to and a passion for, I probably would have taken the education side of it more serious. I probably would have been a little bit more uh, uh, intricate in uh, understanding the details um, and also I probably would have asked more questions. I was self-made and you know, you can't, you can't really be taken serious uh, unless you go to school because there's so many other things that you can learn. The dynamics of, 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 of haircuts, where, where, what you need to learn about skin, uh, the trichotomy of, of just the hair, um, also understanding sanitation. The skin, uh, one of the things about the skin, you can break it and you can get so many different germs and so many di different diseases. So if you don't have a clear understanding of, of the skin and you don't have an understanding of the scalp, you don't have an understanding of, of anything about the, 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 the business of just educating yourself on, on haircuts, then you can just cut hair and cut the haircuts you like and just be good with that. I don't, I can't say that I can take them serious. I think they take themselves more serious than um, someone on the outside looking in because they're, they don't have the education. But you know, I, there are some great barbers out there that don't have education. It won't get them that far, but you know, if they want to move to another state, I think that a lot of states do apprenticeship and, and sometimes that's a big hiccup for them when they want to travel to another state and reside. 
Uh, but, you know, I really feel like if you are a great barber and you have a great skill set and it's something that you do and you don't take it serious uh, and you want to take it serious, go get your license. It, it's, it's well worth it. It's all art. It's, it's, it's all art. I think you think about um, a lot of people talked about, oh, well, don't don't do fibers. You know, you think about it, you know, you you I don't really believe that it's, it's necessary to use fibers if you don't know how to cut hair. If you know how to cut hair and you can actually, you know, uh, enhance that cut by giving a little bit more pop on the edge line it's great but don't cut someone's hair and you don't understand the foundation of cuts there's no detail to it and you just want to slap some some uh, fibers in there just to kind of make it look better and then as soon as it wears away and washes off the haircut was shitty to start with you know you know get the foundation of the cut good and then the the fibers and all that stuff is a pop you know as far as uh, people using uh, using fire I think it's an art I don't think that is something that people do with every client, but there are skill sets there. And, you know, some people uh, can cut a whole haircut with scissors, and I think that that is awesome. Uh, there are a lot of things that I feel like brings a lot of pop, brings a lot of intrigue uh, to the industry, and, and that's what I like about it. So I, I like the New Age Barbers. They, they bring a different flair, uh, yet at the same time, uh, mixing some of the foundational truths and tools and skill sets uh, to what the old school brings can really, you know, when you merge those together, it can bring a good, um, bring a good partnership. You have a different, you have a different understanding and dynamic when you create an experience. You know, it's, when you go to Four Seasons Hotel, you're going for the experience in the service. When you go to Disneyland, you're going for the experience. It's different from going to a county fair. Uh, when you go into a, a barbershop or a salon or a spa and you're getting um, extra uh, tension, uh, detail, you're, you're getting an experience. Uh, it's easy to go into um, a chain salon or a chain barbershop, get a 15-minute haircut. You're trading money for service. You're not trading... Uh, dollars for experience and I really believe that if you're going to get a service make sure it's an experience that's something that you can remember something that you can depend on when you go there and and that experience gives you consistency to continue to have a barber or stylist or any licensed beauty professional uh, barbering professional for years to come <laughs> uh, do I plan on retiring? I think that, that um, I'm kind of semi now. You know, I'm very limited to the chair now that I've started, you know, share, share, and, and I'm, you know, traveling and I'm speaking and I'm educating. I think that, you know, I don't think I'll ever uh, quasi-retire, ret but I do think that there are limit there's going to be time where I'm very limited uh, as I am now, even more so. But I think it's going to come to a point where I'm not going to be able to service my clientele on a on a uh, consistent basis. Moment to moment and, and uh, a little bit at a time, I think that the, where we're at in the industry is, is now elevated and, and there are people paying attention to it that probably haven't paid attention to it. But the next thing for me is just uh, becoming a better a student uh, becoming a better uh, leader and con re continually remaining to be teachable so that I can continue to grow and uh, be a better um, leader for my company and for my family.